Timers are one of the foundational nodes in any game made with Godot. Whether you're counting down till the round starts or delaying something from happening, timers are everywhere in video games. And it's really important to understand how they work. In this video, we'll go over how to use timers in Godot from every angle that I know of, and hopefully it'll help you better understand them. So we've got our main scene. There's nothing really happening. We'll drag in good old Godot robot buddy. Does the mascot have a name? I don't know. Please let me know if you do. Um, I'd love to know this little buddy's name. It runs, that's great. We'll add a new node to the root. We'll call it timer. It's just a countdown timer, pretty simplistic. We'll change this to be flash timer because we're gonna make our little robot buddy flash. And now here in the properties, we've got process callback. Don't know what this does. That's an area for me to learn. We've got wait time. That's how long until the timer's over. Defaults to one second. We've got one shot, which just does the timer once and then doesn't repeat. And then auto start, which starts it right when it's added, when it's added to the scene. Start automatically. We've got our node signals. Just one, pretty simplistic, timeout. We'll double click it. Well, we don't have our main node. We'll add our main, a script to our main node, and we'll clear this stuff out so there's nothing there. We'll go to flash timer, we'll connect it to main, on flash timer timeout, sensible name, Godot's always good about that, connect it. And we'll just go ahead and we'll <clears throat> expand this and make it print debug. And we'll just say timer timeout. Let's just illustrate that our timer is working. All right. One second has passed, I think. Nothing happened. Huh, that's odd. Why is that? Let's click our flash timer. Oh, remember? Auto start. We need to click it. Sorry for that fake fake out. Um, I know that that didn't work <laughs> and why it didn't. Um, but now we see every second timer timeout is getting printed to debugger down here. Great, we know it's working. Now let's make it do something interesting. We've got our icon. That's our little buddy. And there's a visible property. That returns a Boolean. So we can say, if our icon's visible, we'll hide it. Else, icon.show. Go back and now every time the timer goes, it flashes our image. That's kind of useful. Let's go ahead and make it even faster. So that's cool about Godot is it just automatically does that. I'll change it back to one second. Let's make it one shot and run it. You'll see our icon show and then high, and it won't come back because it ran the timer just one time. Let's turn that off though, because we want that to happen. Let's now do a couple of other things. In our process callback, let's go ahead and see what our flash timers properties are. So there is a time left property, print debug, we'll print debug that. Print debug is just an easy way to put out, put down below while you're uh, Exploring things, checking them out. There's other ways to go about debugging, but I think for screencasts and these purposes, it gives us a good sense of what's there. So the value down here that's changing rapidly is time left. And then wait time is the length of the timer. So if we make this 10 and change it, now it's 10, the wait time, and the value that's ever decreasing is the timer. Now print debug is useful for just showing that, but let's go ahead and get rid of that. Save it. We got a pass so it doesn't yell at us. And then let's add a label. And we'll call that label time remaining. In process, every frame will set time remaining's text to our flash timer dot time left. This value though needs to be a string because text is a string. 
So we can just go ahead and this is a simple way to say replace this value in the string with whatever this value is. And since this value is a float, it'll cast it accordingly and display it. So we can see up here, time remaining is rendered. And we've got all these text values because it's a float and all these decimals. Let's go ahead and make this a little nicer. We'll add a placeholder text here, time remaining, or you know, we'll just put some stuff here so we can see what that looks like. And we'll drag it above here. And we'll then take it and go back to our script. And there might be a round, I don't know. Let's go and see. If we look at float, is there a round function? That would be nice. I don't see one. Let's see, round. Round x to the nearest whole number, which is not what we want, but I saw a round f. Round f. Hmm, pretty close. Halfway casts rounded down from zero. Hmm, 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 hmm. I do not know decimals. Pad decimals. That's kind of close. That's not what we want. Hmm. Let's just call the round. We'll just keep it simple. We can say round, round f. Let's see what happens. All right, that makes it a whole number. That's kind of nice. Maybe you want it to be more hectic, but I think that works for us for now. And 10 seconds is kind of long, so we'll go ahead and change our timer back. Now, how could we reset the timer when we press an, an action? Like maybe we want to reset it um, and toggle it. We could say func input on the input callback. We could say if event that is action pressed, we'll just do UI accept, which is spacebar. And we can actually say time flash timer. And there is a, I think we can just call start. And that will restart the timer. So it's counting down. I pressed it again. It restarted it. That's great. Well, what if we go ahead and put this into toggle icon visibility and do a function, make a custom function ourselves, toggle icon visibility. Great, now we can call that here, and we can say, um, this is like a short way to toggle icon, to like override our timer, but not have it keep running. So if we press space, it toggles the visibility, it restarts the timer, the timer now goes and changes it. We can press it, and it keeps resetting the timer. So that's one way you can re interact with your timer as needed. You can also, let's go ahead and comment this out. So hilarious that Godot puts comments in a weird way in the script editor right there. Um, we could say flash timer dot. If the flash timer is stopped, then we'll say flash timer dot start. Oops, sorry, that's not what I want. I think there's a pause. Yes, if pause, flash timer dot. One moment, please. I think what we just want to say is flash timer is equal to the opposite. Flash timer pause is equal to the inverse of flash timer pause. So we can set that property to pause and toggle our timer. So now instead of flashing it, we can just pause the timer. I press the space key, it's not running. Press the space key again, it resumes. So just, you know, there are some examples of like toggling visibility and restarting the timer. Here's one for pausing it and um, toggling it and resuming it. I hope that helps explain timers. Timers are so useful. You set them as needed. You can change all these properties here in your code. So you can instantiate a new timer node, set the time, 
runs for that kind of stuff, all with code. Um, so use that as needed. Hope that helps. Thanks so much. Catch you later. Bye.